Shaman is um, a mediator between the spirit world and the physical world. We hold the values and the understandings of what happens within cultural society, as well as understanding the preservation of life, not just within humans, but within animals and within nature itself. Mm. And we also intercede for spirits to be able to make communication or bring new ideas or new understandings to people so that they can better their lives. And we also have the ability to use um, powers that can influence change in people as well as opening up their own powers mm -hmm. so that they can see the benefit of being completely aware of themselves and then coming into that awareness of self allows them to live in an authentic way so that they create a better life, and, uh, uh, not just for themselves, but for, the, for their family, for their community, for everyone. So shamans yeah. are, the, are the ambassadors for, for, to, bring that, you know, to bring that into fruition. Wow, that's a beautiful, beautiful answer. And when you are embodying this, what is the type of healing that you're giving to people? Like when you say that you show up to show them who they authentically are, like I had a few people ask like, oh, is shamanism, is that Reiki energy healing? Like I feel that you use a lot of different energy modalities and different ways of healing and, and uh, giving your gifts to the world. So what are some of those ways? Well, first of all, just understand just like the basic and understanding of shamanism, right? So a shaman isn't someone who just takes plants and gives it to people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have this misinterpretation that, oh, you're a shaman, you must be doing ayahuasca, you must be doing a boga, you must be doing all yeah. these things. These are uh, people who work with plants, right? Shamanism is geared in the fundamental understanding of both not just the, uh, the biology of your body, but understanding how your, your mind works, understanding how your body works, understanding how energy is operating in the universe and operating on a planetary level because the energy that's in the universe is also different from the energy that's happening on a planetary level then there's energy that's happening in your environment and then there's energy that's happening in the, in the natural environment such as nature and the forest jungle and so forth so what we do as we assess all of these energies, how they're affecting you, what types of things are affecting you, then we look at your belief patterns, your belief systems, where they come from, why you're holding on to them, why do you use them, um, and why do you continue them in your life to, is it because you're afraid to move forward, is it because you're afraid to take responsibility in a certain area of your life, or are you a person who likes to, to blame other people for your existence, or are you honoring and understanding yourself as a powerful being? Once we understand these things, then we begin to build a plan that is based on what is the element that you're dealing with. So if you do have symptoms of illnesses or things of this nature, we look at the, the cause, core, effect, record, memory, and discordant vibration of these illnesses. Mm -hmm. If you are operating from a mental distortion or energy, we look at your thinking process. Are you thinking correctly as in for you? Are you thinking against yourself? Is your environment conducive to your evolution? Is the food you're eating conducive to your body for its process of evolution and sustainability? Is your emotions wavering from highs to lows? And if so, what type of things are creating that? Then we look at your spiritual. What are your spiritual beliefs? Do you believe in creation? Do you believe in God? Do you believe that there is no God? Are you atheist? Um, how was your, your belief system, your belief in creation, how does it affect you in your, in your way of believing in yourself? So once we figure that out, then we tap into the spirit to the spiritual realm and use different powers that are available to us. In shamanism, when you are a full-fledged shaman, you have access to all the dimensional gates. So I can pull Reiki is, is one dimensional energy that has been given. And actually, in fact, Reiki from the whole understanding of Shokurei, Seheki, Daikyo Mio and Hasen Shonen Tsunen is basically one aspect of Reiki. There are 10 levels of Reiki that haven't been given to people on earth wow. yet because they haven't shown yet the mastery of using these symbols in the right way that it can be used. And the dimensions that you're tapping into, they're infinite. Infinite. Wow. Infinite. And so we have many doorways. And, and, and so that's why in shamanism, one of our biggest lessons in learning is to be able to become um, adaptable to any type of situation so that we can access these other dimensions. Because for human beings, they have a very set tone of how they want to see things. Whereas in shamanism, we can't create judgments because judgments creates a wall. So we have to mm. be completely fluid. Right. Yeah. And so once we figure out what is the best thing for you, then if I have that power already in me, I'll use it, and if I don't have it, I'll download it and then bring it into your system. And then downloading from it is just having spirit give it to you. So it, it comes in through your mind's eye? 
you could say it like that. Let's make it more, if we want to make it more um, understandable. Yeah. Downloading means that there are certain frequencies of energy that are projected at you and you have the ability to receive those frequencies because of your training as a shaman. Mm. You learn how, how to receive energy from spirit. Most human beings live in what we call a very perplexed state where they operate from the idea that there's some power outside of them that is doing something to them or they operate from a place that they can do it all themselves and they don't need any help. And so yeah. it's either one of these two. <laughs> Those are very extreme. And so this is something that you learn early as a child, correct? In Absolutely. Your, in your training. Absolutely. And, and what was that like? Like when I think about a shaman in training, I just imagine like you in the jungle as a kid with your ancestors and like living alone on a mountain. But what was it actually like? No, it's not like that. You, if you're in a tribe and living in a tribe in, your, in the place in your origin, yes, it would be like that. However, my family migrated to America. America. So my training was much more being like in the house, you wow. know, at your aunt's house, in the backyard. Is that you know? who taught you most of what you know or how um, you? Different, yeah, different people within that. So different family members and then also um, different tribal members are also different mystics who would come in and be like, I'm, I've been sent to work with you wow. because you need this and this. And so it was a mixture of both. I had the African cultural training and then I had... Um, the Yoruban culture training, and mm -hmm. then I had um, different uh, people come in to support me in that from different walks of life. And it can be anything from a mystic to a person who works in a certain field of understanding of energy to a doctor. Yeah. You know, and so all of these different people have, you know, came and just, it was, it was literally, the way my mom best put it was, they were already set up to come into your life to be there. Yeah. So your family's training wasn't enough for me because you see, when you are a shaman and you take your cultural understandings, you're only limited to your cultural understandings. And in a lot of African cultural understandings is a lot of sacrificing, and I'm not into it. I'm no. not into killing animals. I'm not into sacrificing anything. Yes. So uh, that was really so hard sacred. for me as a kid, you know, seeing these animals in a tub and seeing these, you know, that these, these sacrifices are going to go on. It's pretty and you intense. had to witness that. Oh, yeah. As yeah. a kid. Yeah. And so when you are experiencing these high, these high levels of these extremes, and then you're told, so you, you don't want to just be like pigeonholed in one thing. And because I'm a shaman of the world, mm -hmm. it wasn't just enough for me to learn about, you know, my cultural understanding of shamanism from African culture, but also learning about other people's cultures. Yeah. So learning about religion. So I also went to Christian school. I also learned about, you know, Buddhism, Tibetanism, learning about the Bhagavad Gita, the Uvagad Gita, reading the, the books understanding their ways, understanding the cultural understandings of these things, even down to, you know, paganism, understanding what paganism is, understanding um, Judaism, understanding, you know, why the Torah, what is the Talmud, why do you say these verses, what is the tree of life, what is the Aleph, what is the Delet, yeah. what is all of these things, because I have to deal with the world. Was that a conscious decision? Or did spirit or maybe your aunt tell you, like, you are not just for this one place, you're for the whole world? It's spirit. And then you, you so in, the, in, the, in shamanism, you have, you have two, you have elders who are oh. in physical and you have elders that are in the spirit. So my ancestors talk to me from the spirit. And, and are, then you are have the elders? Yeah. Or two different things. So elders represents anyone who comes to bring you instruction. Ah, uh, okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people think oh, it's like an old person coming and teaching you on the yeah. mountaintop. It's not like that. <laughs> you can have a, I would sometimes be laying in bed and a spirit would come in my room and shake me in my bed and be like, oh. we have training to do. Get up. Wow. You know, and you're like... It's like the military. It's intense. Yeah. <laughs> it can be intense sometimes because you, you have something touching you that yeah. you can't see, you know, and you know it's there because you can feel it. Yeah. And you trust because you're told in your training that when a spirit comes to you to listen and give it respect the same way you would a human. We have this word called talmuntu. Talmuntu means you have respect for the living and you have respect for the invisible in the same way. You don't vary between the two. A lot of times people have a lot of, they oh, I love, you know, they talk to human beings and whatever, but then all of a sudden an angel's trying to talk to them and they have no respect because they think the angel, they can't talk to an angel. So huh. it's, the, Talmuntu is realizing that you respect the living the way, if I build relationships with you as a friend, like I call you, I spend time with you, we go out, we have a good time, I have to do the same to the spirits. Wow. So how do you sort of embrace that? Do you just sort of like call upon them? And There's nothing you, to call upon. They're always they're here. Just, they're always there with you. This is a, like a misconception that new age uh, uh, belief <laughs> systems have created. I call upon da da da. I call upon this and that. Yeah. In, in the spirit world, everything is aware of, its, of, of everything. Yeah. So there's nothing to call upon. I just start the conversation. Wow, that's
That's amazing. Like right now, your ancestors are here right now. They're, they're all aware. You, the moment you start talking to them, they're, they, they are aware. Their consciousness is already aware of consciousness. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, that does right? make sense, I think. So yeah. that's the reason why when, you, when people talk about God, they say oh, God is omnipresent, omnipresent, omniscient, and, and, and omnipresent. It's the same thing because God consciousness gives awareness to all things. Mm -hmm. The difference between you being in a human body and outside of a human body is that in a human body, you've been conditioned to the thinking process of the world as you are in this dimension. So you're told that your only knowledge and your only application of knowledge and truth is that which you've studied and that which you've learned. But when you go into the spirit and remove the mind that is only supposed to just be the messenger, mm -hmm. instead of the mind thinks it's supposed to be the one that figures everything out, which is the big mistake in human consciousness, yes. and is why people suffer, because it's malfunction in thinking. Mm. The thinking is, here's the spirit, the spirit is to tell the mind, the mind is not supposed to think about is this, this, and is this, this. It's supposed to go right to the emotions, tell the emotions. The emotions then um, create it because emotion is energy in motion. So it puts the energy. The physical world receives it. The elemental spirits in the physical world arrange it and bring it into your life in, the, in a tangible way. But what has happened in, in, in our world is that the mind hijacks and pushes the spirit away because it has false beliefs. And then it takes over the emotions, tells the emotions all kinds of information that really isn't governed for wellness, isn't governed for love, isn't governed for for mm. sense of, of harmony and balance. It is governed out of, of incorrect information that it gathered from this world. Now, most human beings don't realize that without the feminine perspective, you only see a fragmented um, frag a fragmented of inform fragment sorry fragment of information. Absolutely. And so your perception of the world is fragmented if you cannot operate from both your masculine and feminine side without judgment. Mm. Judgment limits you from seeing the picture. So you see it like a puzzle piece and you react to that puzzle piece. So when you react to that puzzle piece, that's what you're sharing with your emotions. So that's why you have a lot of pain and conflict in your life because you're not seeing the bigger picture and the only one who can see the bigger picture is your spirit. Yes. So that's what, so that's what we learn in shamanism. One of the first things we learn as children is to that we're that yes society is not going to agree with us people are going to think we're crazy and that most people are going to be uh, a little bit com uh, conflicting and combating with the information and i feel like this is where where one of my big things is that a lot of shamans have become i call them watered down shamans yeah. because shamans have become so lazy now they're just like here take this medicine instead of sitting down because they don't want to have conflict with that you that seems like a western mentality as well it, it, it yeah, is. there's a pill for this or like, oh, just go to this yoga class. Yeah, just take this ayahuasca. That's it. Yeah. But we're not going to tell you how to access your powers while you're using the ayahuasca or while you're on the aboga or while you're on the peyote. Yeah. We're not going to sit down with you and show you the fundamental understandings of human existence, um, the oncology of it, the psychology of it, the understanding of sociology, the understanding of anthropology, and the understanding of, of the mind and how the mind actually works. No, they're not going to do that because that means that you have to deal with your your issues meaning yeah. like human beings and it's unfortunate human beings like to combat they like to because of the ego they, they want to be right about their their little box even though their little box is killing them and squishing them and and, and you know suffocating them they want to be right about it yeah so shaman doesn't want to deal with your your reaction if he has to pull you into a bigger box and you're still you're still holding to your little tiny little box so they just kind of you know give you like here take this medicine and let's get that box open you yeah. buy this medicine how do you i feel like there's so many shaman shamans out there mm -hmm. now people claiming to be shamans especially in la especially in all the big cities mm -hmm. but for i don't know maybe some people who are watching this or listening how do you know if they're the real shaman or how do you you know because some people might not be aware of what the signs are so there are what we call patterns of powers right or are patterns of degrees of awareness and you can just give it any name you want but basically what it means is that in order to identify a shaman a shaman has to exude a certain amount of abilities mm -hmm. it has to be more than four or five abilities it can't just be like oh i'm a psychic they have to yeah. be able to show you in the moment that what are some of those abilities 
Like for instance, um, I have the ability that I can like go through your psyche right now and figure out what you're thinking. I can listen to your thoughts right now. Yeah. Um, I can go through your body and look and see, okay, this is what your body's communicating. I can talk to a tree if I want to, a flower. I can talk to animals. I can pinpoint information and directions. I can go in and figure out what types of energies are actually causing effect to you. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have to go in and do some kind of like, let me do that. I can send energy to you just by sitting here and being here. I can Definitely. communicate to any spirit that needs to talk to me. I can communicate to any, pretty much anything, really, Were these basically. gifts that you just naturally had, which is why you were recognized as a child, or did you exhibit a couple gifts and then your training really brought all of them out now? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mixture. So I exhibit, the first exhib, um, exhibit that you know when she's one of the shaman is that they love um, you unconditionally. Mm -hmm. So that's the first key. If a shaman can't hug you more than five seconds or hold you in their arms, they're not a shaman. Someone once told me that and it takes seven seconds to really feel the energy when you give someone a hug. I mean, you can feel a shaman. You can yeah. feel them. Like, like it, it, you know, my, my aunt always said, she says, honey, I said, honey, what, how are they going to know? Like, you know, I always said this thing about, um, you know, me being a shaman and there's all these people who are saying they're shamans and they're really not. Yeah. And my aunt said, don't worry, they'll know who you are in the end. And I said, why? And she said, because they'll feel your love. Because shamans exude answer. extreme amount of love from their being. People, you'll know a shaman because you'll get an energy moving through. You'll be like, yes. oh my God, that hug was intense. Or, oh my God, I feel this intense energy. What is this thing about you? That's it's how because I felt after our healing. Like totally, like when I came home, I was like, wow, it was so fun. It felt so good. Yeah, that's another thing you'll know. Yeah. Shamans will not beat you up. They will not tell you you're doing something wrong. They are mm -hmm. here to uplift you. They're here to look at the beauty in you. They're yeah. here to show you the beauty in you. They're not going to sit here and argue with you. If someone starts arguing with me, I'm like this. <laughs> yeah. There's no, I'm not, arguing means that I There's have no to point, defend yeah. something. I have nothing to defend with you. I'm here to serve you. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to argue, you go right ahead. I'll just be here to love you and support you.